Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm going to now go through question number 11, which is the final question of the October 2023 Pure Mathematics P1 International A Level at Excel exam. And um, this question here is, tells us about figure 5, which is a curve or part of the curve C with equation y equals f of x, where f of x equals 2x squared minus 12x plus 14. It's like this quadratic curve here. So part A simply tells us to write 2x squared minus 12x plus 14 in the form A times x plus b squared plus c. So we have to complete the square for this expression. So we start off with our quadratic expression 2x squared minus 12x plus 14. Now there's lots of ways that uh, different ways that people do this. I prefer myself to just focus on the first two terms okay the x squared and the x term and what i do is i want it to say 1x squared i want it to say 1x squared so i'm going to take out two regardless of whether it's a factor of the 12 or not it doesn't have to be for example if this was say a 9 i would then put a bracket and then i'll write x squared now here i'm going to put minus 6x okay but if there was a 9 here i'd put minus 9 over 2x just divide this by 2 because you've taken 2 out the objective is not to find a common factor. The objective is to write, make this say 1x squared so that when we complete the square, it will work out. Right? Now, some people would also take out the 2 from the last term. I prefer not to. I will close the bracket here and then write the last term as it is. Either way is fine. If that's what you're used to doing, go ahead and do it that way. I just like to focus on these two terms because this is um, when I teach completing the square in the beginning, I focus on these two terms, x squared and the x term. So now I'm going to write the 2, and I'm going to write the plus 14, but I'm not going to have my mind focused on them. I'm going to focus on these two terms first. Now when you complete the square for x squared minus 6x, you're going to have, now that you've got 1x squared, you can start, you, ha you have your bracket, you square the bracket, all right? You write the square root of x here, you write the minus sign between these two terms, because there's a minus here, you write a minus, if there's a plus here, you write a plus here. And then you take the coefficient of x and you divide it by 2. So 6 divided by 2 is 3, so that becomes minus 3. Okay, and now we have to make sure that when we expand this, we get whatever's in this bracket. Now, if I expand this, I'm going to get x squared, I'm going to get minus 6x, and I'm going to get plus 9. I don't want the plus 9. I don't want the plus 9, so I'm going to put minus 9 here. That will make this become the same as that. Even if it was x plus 6 and it was x plus 3, I would still put minus 9 because the last term will always be positive 9, even if it's negative or positive here. So you always take away the square of this number. You always take away the square of this last number. Right Now we have um, completed the square for this bar inside the bracket. Now we want to write it in this form. So I'm going to take this 2 and multiply it with um, these two terms inside the bracket. So this 2 is going to be 2 times x minus 3 squared and 2 times minus 9, which is minus 18. And then we got at the end plus 14. I'm not going to multiply by 2 because I closed the bracket there. Okay, If I had taken out the 2 from this as well, then I would multiply that by 2 and get my answer. So now we got in the end, finally, to, um, to complete the question, we've got 2 times x minus 3 squared minus 18 plus 14 is minus 4. So this is the form that they're asking for. Okay, so you see A is like 2, B is like minus 3, and C is like minus 4. They didn't tell you to write down the values of A, and B, A, B, and C. They said write it in this form. Okay, so we've written in this form, and we they want us to have written in here the what A, B, and C are in the expression. So we've done that, and that's the end of question um, to one part of two, sorry, not one, 11 part A. Okay, completing the square. Now for part B, it says, given that C has a minimum at the point P, state the coordinates of P. So we can see from the graph, there's a minimum at point P. Now, how do you find the minimum of a curve? Well, there's different methods we can use, but as we have already completed the square, it's simply given by taking the this form of the quadratic, complete the square, whatever value is out here, okay, outside the bracket, that is your minimum value. 
which is minus four. And whatever value of x goes in here that makes this bracket zero, whatever value of x makes this bracket zero is the x coordinate of the minimum. So what, va what, what value of x makes this bracket zero? Well, that's three, yeah? What makes x minus three equals zero? When x equals three. So x equals three and y equals minus four. This is, these are the coordinates of the point P, the minimum point. So state it, you don't have to really show any steps. You can just write it down from this form. Now, some people might not understand why is this the minimum of the curve. Okay, so I'm going to just illustrate this here. If you have y equals 2 times x minus 3 squared, uh, what was it? Uh, minus 4. Okay, why would this be the minimum point? Well, I'm going to rewrite this as minus 4 plus 2 times x minus 3 squared. If you think about it, it's the same thing. But basically what's happening is you're going to always have minus 4 plus 2 times something which is squared. Now when you square something, it's always positive. So for example, even if x was a really small number like minus a million, you're going to have minus a million and 3 squared will give you something positive. So you're always going to be adding something to minus 4. You'll never have the case where it's minus 4 minus something because this can never be negative. You're going to square it. It's going to be plus something. So that means minus 4 is the smallest it can ever be. Why? Because you're always adding something to it. Now, what is the smallest, okay, that this expression can be? What's the smallest that you can add to the minus 4? Well, when this bracket becomes 0, this thing becomes 0, you're adding 0 to it. So the smallest thing that you can add to the minus 4 is 0. That means the smallest you can get is minus 4 when this bracket becomes 0. What makes this bracket 0? When x equals 3. That's why x equals 3 and y equals minus 4 is the minimum of this curve. Okay, so that's a little expla explanation. You don't really have to know that, but it's good to understand the reasons why things are what they are. And so basically, whenever you completed the square, the x value that makes the bracket 0 is the x coordinate, and what's left when this whole thing disappears, which is a minus 4, is the y coordinate of the vertex. Whether it's a minimum or a maximum, it will be the vertex. Okay, so that's the answer to part B of the question. Now we're going to move on to part C. So here we're told the line L intersects the curve uh, C at minus 128 and at P as shown. And the P, P coordinates as we found were um, minus, the, there, was, there were 3 and minus 4 because we ended up with Y equals 2 times X minus 3 squared minus 4. Right, that was the um, form of our quadratic when we completed the square. So we got these two points where they intersect. Find the equation of line L, giving you answer in the form y equals mx plus c, where m and c are constants to be found. So we know that the line passes through the point minus 1 and 28, and through the point 3 and negative 4. Okay, so to find the equation of a straight line, we need two things. One thing is we need a point on the line. Okay, the point on the line. All right, so this was 3 and negative 4. Okay, now I'm going to use the point minus 128, reason being because that point was given to us. Okay, we didn't calculate it, so, um, you know, if we, we had to calculate the coordinates of the vertex, and maybe if you made a mistake in that, that mistake won't cause problems here. But, well, it will cause some problems with the gradient, but at least one of our values is correct. The second thing we need to find is the gradient of the line L. Now the gradient of a line, because we have two points on the line, we can find that. Okay, we can find the gradient. Now we can't use the curve or differentiation to find the gradient of the line because we don't know what the gradient of the line is uh, or, or the curve is at these two points. And these two points are not the same as the gradient of the, of the, of the, the line. Okay, they don't share the gradient at this point. If it was a tangent, for example, if it were a tangent to the curve, uh, yeah, it has a gradient of the curve at that point. This is not this line is not a tangent to the curve at these points that we know. So we have to use the fact that we can find the gradient between these two points by the difference, the change in the y, which is going to be 28 minus minus 4 over the change in x, which is minus 1 minus 3. That gives you 28 plus 4, which is 32 over minus 4, which is negative 8. So the gradient of the tangent is negative 8. Okay, so the gradient of the line, line is minus 8. Not the tangent, sorry. the gradient of the line. I was talking about tangent. There's no tangent here. The gradient of the line, 
the gradient of our line L is negative 8. So now we can use the formula y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So we're going to use the two points y minus the y value, which is 28, equals m, which is minus 8 times x minus the x value, which is minus 1. So it's x minus minus 1 it gives you x plus 1. x minus minus 1, x plus 1. So now we can expand this. We have y equals, it's going to be minus 8x minus 8 and plus 28 because you're going to add 28 to both sides. So therefore we can say the equation of the line is y equals minus 8x, negative 8x, minus 8 plus 28 is plus 20. So that looks kind of like it's on the positive side, the negative gradient. It seems like it's okay. All right, so there is the equation of the straight line L. Uh, which passes through these two points. So there's part C done. Now there's a part D. It says a finite region. So let me write the equation of this, this line. We said minus 8x plus 20, minus 8x plus 20. Okay, and the equation of um, the, the curve is given here. So it says the finite region R, is shaded, shown shaded in figure 5, is bounded by the x-axis, the, uh, the line L, the y-axis. So the x-axis, the line L, the y-axis, and C. Use inequalities to define the region R. So first of all, it's to the right of the y-axis. The y-axis is a line x equals 0. So it's to the right of x equals 0. We can say it's a solid line, so we'll put greater than or equal to. I don't think that they're very strict about that. You can put greater than or equal to. Okay. Um, so you can put greater than, I, I, as far as I'm aware, they will. I will check the mark scheme um, to make sure, but I'm pretty sure that they will accept that. All right, so I, I would put greater than or equal to because it's a solid line. And also by the x-axis, now the x-axis has equation y equals 0. So it's above that, so it's going to be y is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, and we can see the line L, the region is below that line. So we can simply just take the line equation of the line, which was minus 8x plus 20, and we can put less than or equal to, okay, um, so we can say y is less than or equal to minus 8, 8x plus 20, sorry. So y is less than or equal to minus 8x plus 20. Okay, so the region is um, below this line, so you put less than or equal to. Okay, it's below the line. And for the curve, we can see that the region is above the curve. R is above the curve, not below the curve. Okay, so above is higher than the curve. So we can say... Also, y is greater than or equal to 2x squared minus 12x plus 14. Okay, so those four inequalities define this region. There are four boundaries to this region. Three of them are straight lines, the line L, the x-axis, the y-axis, and one of them is a curve. So this is the answer to our question, which was the last question. On this paper and the last part of the last question, other questions from this particular paper can be found on the playlist that will appear in this section over here at the end of the video. Other questions from the topic that we just discussed here, which was, it's got something to do with quadratics and it's also got something to do with inequalities and regions. So I'll put it in both playlists and you can subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.